So in today's short SEMA E2 topic video, we're looking at the project management process and more specifically, we're looking at the Guido and Clements project management lifecycle model. Well, according to Guido and Clements, projects are just like humans in the sense that they have life cycles. And that's exactly what we're going to be examining in today's video. And we're going to begin with a really interesting example by looking really excitingly at roadworks. Um, because this is a project, isn't it? When we go out onto the roads and we're driving in our cars and we think, oh God, there's always roadworks going on down this road, but nothing ever seems to get done. That's the only time we really notice the roadworks, isn't it? When the actual works are being done, because suddenly these cones appear out of nowhere with all the signage and then maybe there'll be a day or two of activity from the people working on the roadworks and then poof. It's all gone. Now let's imagine, for example, that you're commuting to work. And for one week, your normal route was closed. So you're going to have to take an alternative route. Now the following week, you can come back and use your original route. So maybe you would notice an immediate improvement. Maybe you'd notice straight away going, hold on a minute, this road is far better before there were lots of potholes in the road so it was really bumpy for my car it wasn't a smooth ride and the cat's eyes in the middle of the road all a little bit broken all a little bit dirty so driving at night was a little bit dangerous you think well actually this is really effective improvement how has all this managed to be done in a week i mean it just came out of nowhere the cones came up on the road the men came then it all went again how has this all happened what about all the complications? What about all the, the gas pipes under the road? Did they have to stop the gas? Or how did they put up all the diversion signs so everyone that didn't use the road as often as you did know the route to take? What about the water mains? How did they make sure they didn't pierce any water mains so they had huge fountains of water spurting up through the road? But that's because a project doesn't just suddenly happen, does it? Firstly, the people behind the project would have had to take some kind of research because obviously they're not just going to have stumbled across the road and thought, hold on, this road's a bit bumpy, we should change it, then it gets changed. There'd have had to be a lot of research done, identifying areas where the road network needed an improvement, and then of course they would then have to obtain permission for the council to actually do the work. But it doesn't just stop there, they don't have to have find a problem and get approval. No, the next stage would be making sure you have the relevant and sufficient resources to do the work. How are they going to make sure that they've got all the necessary equipment so they don't burst that water pipe, so they don't burst a gas pipe? How do they have a certain amount of signage for health and safety? Are they going to have enough workers to make sure that the work does get done in the agreed time? And then we can see... Once the resources have been sourced, then the implementation can happen. And we can see here, this is next to the actual roadworks, because the implementation stage, in our example, is the only bit that you, as a road user, will have noticed. You won't have noticed all this extra bit that was done behind the scenes in the lead up to the roadworks to hopefully make the implementation stage as swift and as uncomplicated as possible. And then, of course, we get to the improved road. Then you've suddenly thought, well, actually, that was really good. I'm glad I had to divert my route for a week. It was actually really worth it. So what we've got, actually, when you think about it, it's very similar to an iceberg. The bit that we've realized, the bit that we saw, the implementation, was the very tip the bit that you can see, everything else happened under the water, just like we see in an iceberg. And then finally, we've got our improved road. Lessons can be learnt. The people behind the roadworks can analyse how effective their plan was. Was there anything they could do better? 
Was it worth them doing it? And then all those lessons can be rolled into their next project. And so what we've seen here is the project life cycle from conception to birth. Okay, and there's lots of models that people use to help them with their projects. And then what we're going to look at first is the big title on screen is, of course, the Gila and Clements. And we've already said it's the life cycle model. We've compared our roadworks to the life cycle model. So let's go and look at the four different stages of the Gila and Clements project and management life cycle model. And that's the last time I'm going to give it its full name because I'm going to mess it up in a second and I'm going to get it totally wrong. So here we go. Let's get our four stages up on screen for you. Well, firstly, we're going to pop a graph up. And we can see that on our axis, we have efforts going up this axis and time going along this axis. Now, what we're looking at with this life cycle model is four different stages. So let's get the first one up on screen. And this is identifying the need for the project. So just as we spoke about with our Roadworks project, it's just not all well and good saying, yeah, we're going to repair every road in this area because some roads wouldn't need repairing. So this is why the first stage is identifying the need, finding a project that needs to be done. And in this section, in the first of these stages, we're going to include things such as feasibility studies. Is this project actually feasible? Is it worthwhile us even embarking on setting forth on this project? And of course, working out the team, the people that are going to have to be involved. So what we'll do is probably stick with our example of potholes in a road. So at this stage, for our example, Perhaps they found that actually lots of cars have been broken while driving along a particular road because of these potholes. So we've identified a need. Okay, That's what we mean by this first section. But as I say, we're made up of four sections. So we've got our identify a need. And then what's going to happen is there's going to be a request for a proposal. And once this request for proposal takes place, then the second stage takes place. And this will be the development of the proposal. So we can see here we've got the conception, we've identified a need. OK, we're going to request a proposal. And in this section, this is when the proposal will be developed. Now, often in projects, several solutions will be proposed. And then one would be chosen at the end of this stage. So perhaps to go, OK, we've got our potholes, so we need something to happen. So can we have a proposal? OK, well, there's a variety of different ways we could solve this problem. But actually, probably the best way to solve potholes is to resurface the road. And then if everyone's in agreement, we can move on to the third stage, which is the implementation of the project. And this is the actualization of the plan and putting everything into practice. Now, as we enter into this stage, the project is going to become more complex. And so it's going to be divided into smaller tasks. So, for example, making sure that the team that are working on the roadworks have enough resources and to make sure they have a plan to follow. And then we move on. Before we can get to the fourth stage, we've got to make sure that the project objective is complete. So the project can either be complete or perhaps it's no longer viable and has to be terminated. And so in this stage, in our final, our fourth stage, this is where we would review also and evaluate how well the project has done. Are there any lessons to be learned? So for our example, we'd have a look at our roadworks and say, well, has this resurface done the job we were hoping for? Well, to judge that effectively, the road's going to have to continue to be monitored. Does the resurface hold up or is it going to immediately break down again and all the old potholes come through? Only by doing this 
can the lessons be truly learned and taken forward so thank you very much for taking the time to watch today's video I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful for your SEMA exams. And if you want any more bite-sized short videos on topics in E2 and E3, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Many thanks. Good luck with your revision.